This is a video on making brushes on the Oasis Benches dubbing brush table. You'll see my thoughts, techniques, and tips on building three different styles of brushes with the same table. The only tools that you'll really need will be a wire brush, some wire, and wire cutters. Here are some of the features. We have a ruler, which is really helpful for measuring out the materials that go on your brush, a wire spool holder, a needle holder, a wire keeper, and a miscellaneous tool and spool holder. The spinning mechanism on the right side has a ball bearing. We have a dual sided tray, which is really helpful for different colors of materials. As you can see, it spins very well. The opposite end has a tension spring and can counter spin. So let's make our first brush, an EP style brush. Grab some wire and attach it to the right side. To attach, you'll simply thread your wire through the small hook and twist it over itself. Make sure you don't cut your wire right now and go ahead and throw that spool on the spool holder. Start cutting your materials to the correct length for your brush. This will vary depending on what style of brush you're making. Start to spread out your materials and please take your time at this point. This is one of the most tedious parts, but to me it is one of the most important parts. Get it lined up how you want it and then go ahead and seal the wire down. You'll reattach the wire the same way that you started. Loop it through the hook and spin it a few times. Then clip your wire off. And do one final check to make sure your materials are lined up. Go ahead and remove the tray carefully and start spinning. There's no formula for how many times to spin versus how many times to brush out your brush. So please just take some time and try to learn. Every brush will be different depending on the density, the type of material, and your skill level. One thing I really appreciate about this dubbing brush table is the ability to counter spin. This makes sure that the left and the right side of the brush are equally tightened. After a series of brushes and spins, you'll get to the point that your brush seems to be adequately tightened and your materials seem to be spread evenly. Check for any tangles and then go ahead and take your brush off of the table. Push in the left side so that the spring engages and you should be able to just slide off the brush. Now you're ready to tie some flies. Now we'll make my favorite style of brush, a craft fur brush. I prefer to use a little bit lighter wire for this as the material is a little bit lighter. Choose the side of the tray that contrasts the color of the material that you're using. A darker material would show up better on a lighter tray and a lighter material would show up better on a darker tray. Begin to spread out your material and once again, take your time with this step. It's very important. The more material that you add, the denser the brush will be, but there is a limit. If you add too much material, the brush won't spin up properly or your materials may not stay in the brush. Secure your wire once again on the right side, clip it off, and then remove your tray. If you find that your materials are falling out at this point, you may need to tighten up your wire or use some dubbing wax or dubbing glue. I prefer not to personally because it's a little bit sticky and messy, but that's my own personal preference. At this point, spin up your brush and begin to brush out the materials. Once again, trying to untangle and not rip the materials apart. It's really important that you take your time and then do some counter spinning as well so that you get the left side of the brush tightened equally. This may be common sense, but the more that you twist your wire up on one side, the closer the materials will be together, increasing the density. I find the longer the materials are and the softer they are, the more prone they are to tangle or twist over themselves. So it takes a little bit longer to brush these out. At this point, the brush is nearly done. I'll give it one final counter spin and then brush one last time. Through trial and error, I've learned that you can over tighten or over twist craft fur brushes and it will actually cut the material, leaving bald patches in your brush. So there's a fine balance between under tightening and over tightening that you'll learn over time. After your final brushing, you're ready to take off your brush and tie some flies. This is a really, really good brush to use for bait fish flies. Now let's make a bulkhead or predator style brush. This will have a core in the middle that will allow the brush to form a teardrop shape when you wrap it around the hook. You're going to want to start with heavier wire and a high amount of density in the center of the brush, which will become the head. The more dense the core is, the higher the shoulders will be or the head will be on the fly, and also the more water push you'll get. 
I like to start with the most short materials and then increase length as I go. And I really like to add all sorts of different types of materials and flashes to make these flies really dynamic. Although these brushes take a while to make, the flies that you tie with them will take a very short amount of time, relatively speaking. So it's kind of a trade-off. Try using different types of materials and lengths of materials to find out what works best for you. Once you're done, trap your wire, cut it off, and begin to spin your brush. Really take your time with these when spinning, as there are way more materials that could get caught or trapped. You'll need to brush out slowly, and really make sure that you're taking your time to get all the tangles out periodically as you go. Due to the thicker gauge of wire and the higher density of materials in the brush, sometimes the brush will unspin itself, which is very normal. Continue to spin it, counter spin it, and brush it, just like you have for the other brushes. Your final product will be a very dynamic brush with a pretty thick core. You'll see a lot of variation in color, flash, etc. And it's really fun to play around with this. Sometimes I find that I have to clip off the brush for these as they've been tightened too much to be able to slide off. I hope you found this to be informative, and please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Time to grab your vise and tie some flies. Thanks for watching.